Dear friends, I want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. This Shabbat is known as Shabbat Shira, the Shabbos of Song, because it was during this Torah reading when the Jewish people crossed the sea and broke out in beautiful song to Hashem. Now the truth is, for the entirety of the 40 years the Jews were in the desert, they were surrounded by miracles. Starting with just breaking through the borders of Egypt as free people, the splitting of the sea, the man, the food, the water, the clouds that protected them, and all the different battles that they had, how they won miraculously, and so many other details that we are told in the Medrash and by our rabbis. But there's one thing that stands out, and that is the manna that fell from heaven. Because in this week's Torah portion, as we talk about the manna that fell from heaven, where there was no more food left over from what they took out of Egypt, and God said, don't worry, I will give you food, and the food fell from heaven, a great miracle. But what is unique about this miracle is that they took a little bit of that man and they put it away to be kept in the Mishkan and then later on in the temple as a sign, not just that God took care of us, but as a sign for the Jewish people for eternity. We don't find that but any of the other things that we have that we don't just talk about what happened then but somehow it is something that we are supposed to feel present in our lives. And actually many people have the custom this week they read the entire portion of the man. They read it as a good omen for parnasah, for livelihood and wealth. So what is it about the man? And here we see something very fascinating. On one hand, God was so generous. He gave them food from heaven. It was pure. It could taste like anything you wanted. It was the most generous offer God can give for the Jewish people. But yet it came with very strict rules. There was only a specific amount that everyone got an Omer. And even if you wanted to gather more and you had a big basket and you did gather more, by the time you got home, you remained exactly with the Omer. And if you took a little less, by the time you came home, it expanded to an Omer. Shabbat, no man fell. Friday, every time there was a double portion waiting. You couldn't leave it overnight. Meaning, you said, listen, tomorrow I want to eat a little bit more. No, this is what you're going to eat today. And whatever is left over will rot. So what is it about the man? Why didn't God just put it in our hands and say, Lay, I'm giving you food. Do what you want with it. You want to eat more tomorrow? Great. Because the man represents not just the food that God gave us, but man represents one of the most important foundational ideas that a Jew has to live with every single day. The man is how God strengthened our emuna, our faith, and built our trust in Him. We all know how important it is to eat, how without food we can't survive. And the 40 years we were in the desert, we totally relied on God. Not generally, Pray to God to help us in our food situation, to have money to buy food. and But we actually totally relied on God. When you went to sleep at night, you didn't know where the food is coming from tomorrow unless you had tremendous total faith in God and trust in God that it's going to be there waiting for you tomorrow morning. You had to trust in God that He's giving you exactly what you need, even though you may think you need less or more. And this is a big part of what the experience in the desert was. God wanted to help us develop 
our faith up to the level of such trust in God that we can go to sleep with the empty cupboard at night. How many of us can do that today? Not knowing where the food will come tomorrow. We're just relying that God said he'll send it, he's going to send it. And the truth is, even today, when we are partaking in a very involved way in our livelihood, in our food process, the true approach of a Jew is to have total faith and trust in God, because that is the source of our food and our eating is directly from God. He allows us to think today that we can do it that way on our own, but it's not true. We cannot. It's totally based on God's generosity to us. So the man reminds us how everything in life, we have to trust in God. Everything in life comes from God. Life itself comes from God. And all the details and the things we need all come from God. Build and nurture your faith and trust in God. It's not something that exists automatically. It may be innately inside of us. But we have to develop it and nurture it and help it grow. Every time we do a mitzvah, every time we proclaim Shema Yisrael, that we believe in God, Every time we say Modani as we wake up in the morning, thanking God for giving us life, all of these things help develop our trust and our faith in Hashem. And the secret is that the greater our trust, the easier the blessings flow from God and the smoother they flow from God. The less our intervention makes a difference. We'll always have to do something. That's the way God designed the world, that we should be a partner in what we're doing. But the clearer that it comes from God. So may God bless you all to have everything you need in the most beautiful and clearest way and have strong trust in Hashem. God loves you. We love you all. Shabbat Shalom. Candlelighting time in Montreal, 4.45 p.m.